Africa Eye goes undercover to expose the trade in disabled children between Tanzania and Kenya. Children who are forced to beg on the streets. We find out how families are tricked into giving up their children. We reveal the true scale of this cruel trade. Oh my goodness. Two, three, four. So far we've counted more than 10 that have come out of this building. And the horror of what's inside the traffickers' den. Oh my God. My name is Njeri Mwangi. I'm a reporter from Nairobi. For more than a year, I've been investigating the trafficking of disabled children. The vast majority say the same thing. They've been brought over from Tanzania to beg. The story of one affected me more than any other. His name is Farah. He has been enslaved by traffickers for nearly half of his life. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> One evening, we follow Farah back to a shack in Kariobangi, a poor neighborhood of the city. I recruit an investigator to go undercover, and she manages to get a job as a cleaner in the shack where Farah is held. Armed with a secret camera, she turns up for her first day of work. Inside is a man called Zengo, who appears to be in charge. Also disabled, he can only walk using crutches. Each evening, Farah is wheeled back to the shack by a minder. Everyone gets a cut of the money he's collected from begging. All except Farah. On average, he brings in 2,000 Kenya shillings, or 18 US dollars each day. Our investigator noticed that Farah is not the only disabled beggar being held in this neighborhood. Early one morning, our team stakes out the area. All on wheelchairs. Oh my goodness, this is another one. Those are seven wheelchairs. I'm afraid I've lost count. There came so many of them. I don't know how many I've counted now. How did all these children end up in this situation? Our investigator asked Farah. It seems like families in Tanzania are being tricked into giving up their disabled children with false promises of financial support. I decide to go there myself to find out more. I met a family who gave their disabled daughter to traffickers in 2017. Kurwa was nine years old. Kurwa? Mm. 
Kura isn't the only disabled child to be taken from this village. Back in Nairobi, we receive more disturbing news from our investigator. Farah has told her he is regularly beaten by Zengo, the man who has held him captive for almost a decade. Knowing that Farah is in immediate danger, we alert the Nairobi police. They begin their own investigation before organizing a major clampdown on the Kariobangi traffickers. The officers search buildings where they suspect children are being held captive. <laughs> Oh my God. A young child and five people are held in a windowless room. I am so shocked at how many people are staying in that house, really shocked. So we are going now to Zengo's house. Zengo, Zengo. Zengo is completely refusing to come out. He denies he doesn't know anything as well. And the police are trying to force him out of the house. With Zengo safely in the police van, we break into the locked rooms. Inside, we find Farah. It's not sitting properly. It was out. How does it operate? For our police, yeah? We have to go to the police. We have to go to the police. We have to go to the police. We have to go to Tonight, we have caught up with two traffickers who the police have arrested. We've also managed to get Farah out of trouble and hopefully he'll be taken to a facility that will take good care of him. I've tried to assure him that he's going to be well, that he will never have to go to the streets again. And that is my hope and prayer for him. Zengo was charged with human trafficking and is in police custody. He denies the charges against him. The people seen rescued during the police operation were all repatriated to Tanzania. Farah is now living in a care home, free from his traffickers, and is finally reconnecting with his family.